Hello and welcome to another episode of Drinking Games Podcast where today we will discuss Xbox 360 versus the PlayStation 3. You'll have to let us know in the comments below which one did you own and which one do you prefer. That's all to come so please stay tuned. Oh my head, never again. How much vodka did I drink? As we always start these podcasts, we start with what we've all been playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so what I've been playing over uh, the holiday break is something that I should have been playing a long time ago. Um, it's Super Mario Odyssey, mm. uh, Nintendo Switch. Um, pleasantly surprised. I, I picked it up and was insanely, uh, insanely shocked by how familiar the entire game was. From gameplay to mechanics to a really shitty storyline. Um, but everything that you you do when as soon as you pick up the controller it's like you're playing mario 64 again it's like you're playing um galaxy or sunshine again the the moves are exactly the same the challenges are exactly the same and it just feels so familiar i think the moves were easier to do in this one yeah they were a lot tighter uh, they've definitely yeah. improved on that i like again it's interesting how you said it. it's um very familiar but how different it still is with the hat mechanic with hat eating using him to jump on and then using him to obviously transform into the um, the different creatures and stuff like that that was the really enjoyable thing like as mario it was so familiar to everything else but they had what they did to get the new unique sort of game styles was, was with cappy where you possessed another a creature and that creature had its own play style it had its own sort of gameplay mechanics whether it was the t-rex or a bullet bill going around they felt so unique and and original um and but again so for me so yeah did you love how they all had a tash as well yeah i did <laughs> love how they all had a tash. <laughs> but it wasn't until about halfway through the game maybe maybe not that far but i realized that mario is a bit evil right you're going around and like, like if someone's not wearing a hat it's like i can possess you i could go in and just steal your soul or whatever and everybody in the world now has to wear a hat is that because of Mario, or is that is that just fashion in that world? I yes. think it's just fashion. Yeah, that's <laughs> what the cool kids are doing. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't I didn't like Bowser in his hat, or with his when he took his hat off and he had a stupid emo quiff that looked weird. They love it though in Japan, don't they? they love a good emo quiff. Yeah, I guess so. But, uh, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed so much about it. The one thing I didn't enjoy, and I think that was just because of the way I was playing it. I'm sure. When I've now that I've completed it, going back and getting all the extra moons, I can imagine it's slightly different. But as you were going through, it felt like you were getting a new moon every two or three minutes, mm. um, and it felt just a little bit oversaturated. Um, There's a hell of a lot of moons though on the levels, yeah, I know. and some of them are really quite interesting how you get them. Like, some of them are just easy to get, but some of them, like when you actually start going into the world and try and find unique ones, are quite quite interesting like there we um, go. so there was one where there's like a this statue and next to it it's an empty like pillar the, and you can get on the horse thing or whatever it is like the statue and just go near it and then that because you know it doesn't tell you that you just kind of have to figure out that which is i thought was really good very simple but very still very good i think the simplicity makes it good i think that's yeah. what makes it um so easy for anyone to pick up and play a real whether it's your first mario game or it's your 20th or more will that be yeah my, uh, my niece she came around and she wanted to play and she was just loved running around it um, it was when i was in new donk city and, i like donk city yeah um and yeah she she was just having a blast i think she got a few moons but she was just like running around as mario and doing daft stuff why not why not but uh yeah it was my game of 2017 and i still stick by it it was just a hell of a lot of fun and it really was just yeah it was just joyous all the way through and it was fun to play easy to play um i quite liked that it gave you a, a lot of moons because mm -hmm. again it was like you were just always progressing in it but if you really want to get into it a bit more there's there's a few more trickier things and stuff like that so there's a level of you know of uh, difficulty in there it's just 
Like some of the random secret levels, some of mm -hmm. them are a bit were a bit tricky. So I've already got the one secret world after where you've got to do like the gauntlet through the tower of the bosses in one playthrough. Um which was fun, which was cool. Um adding loads more difficulty. But you know, as you say, the fact that you can pick and choose which moons you play so if you do are playing one which is a bit tricky you can just go and play and go on another one because they're right there i think yeah. that keeps you playing keeps you engaged and makes it much harder to put down yeah definitely especially with it being handheld you can just take it with you and and it looks great as well it looks you know gorgeous and uh the ending was quite nice i thought mm. <laughs> oh. well why 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 did princess peach even contemplate choosing Bowser at the end when they both put their uh, bouquets of flowers to her. She's like, oh, I genuinely don't know which to pick. This guy just kidnapped you for like yeah. the entire and you've been game. Mario for for the, about the hundredth time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why, why, why are you even considering? Like, you got the. Um, Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I really also really enjoyed how they did the crime of the war by taking that to the 8 bit era. Yeah, I thought that was yeah, a really was cool. Really um, it, that was it, a lot. A lot of things that reviewers were saying, and I agree. Just the game constantly surprises you with stuff all the time. Yeah. You think you've known the game, and then you're going to a new world. There'll be a new little thing that just changes the way you think about the game and stuff. It's this, yes. Yeah, Switch started strong. They Zelda did. and that. And now it's kind of blacklisted because you started so <laughs> strong. It's like, ah, how can you keep up with that? The bar is set insanely high. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what I've been playing. Um, I think I could, yeah, I'm kind of annoyed it took me so long to play. Um, <laughs> it's one of them games, yeah, where you do that. Like, oh, shit, I should have played that a hell of a lot sooner. Uh, so I've been playing um, Telltale's Marvel's Guardian of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy, even, um, only because I, I did get it free um, as part of a humble bundle, but. I, with everything that happened at Telltale, I really wanted to give it a go, and I didn't even know it existed until I got it, and I was like, oh, hello, give this a go. So I started it, I was sucked in, so much so that I got to the first decision and I couldn't make it, because I felt like so much was waiting on this one decision. Wow. <laughs> and After all the things we spoke about with Telltale. <laughs> <laughs> everything. And the fact that I've played the Batman games, and I know my choice doesn't make a difference, mm -hmm. but... I still felt it did. I didn't want to piss anybody off. <laughs> I think that's was what can be strong about those games, that illusion of choice. Of choice. Mm. Um, and if it's done right, like I assume in Guardians has it, yeah. you know, it really makes you go, uh -huh. So uh, the, the great thing about Guardians is, uh, I haven't got through it because uh, through it all yet because when I um, started it, I did like up to that point, got up to that first decision, and then I went back to it and it had lost all the save, so yeah. I had to start again. But the great thing about it, obviously, when you play Batman, um, Batman Telltale, which is the one that I've played, um, I haven't played them all. Um, you only really play as Batman. Yeah. You do a couple of other diddly bits, but mainly Batman. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in Guardians, if you're in a fight scene. You, you are like all these different people and okay. you've got to react like, really quickly okay loads um, of QTEs then yeah yeah it's, it's been obviously <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah so tell tell Chris come on yeah. well, you never know they could have tried something new and maybe they maybe they wouldn't have compost yeah so yeah that's um, that's that's been fun so far it, it got me hooked um, yeah, as I say I've got to the second chapter uh, not to the second chapter the second part of the first chapter mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's completely mental. I've never seen Guardians of the Galaxy. Don't don't hate me. Don't hate well, me so so what made you, other than Humble Bundle? What made you choose Guardians of all the? Got it free with Humble Bundle. <laughs> <laughs> so you that. Okay. And I thought, you know what? I know it's got an awesome soundtrack. I'm, I'm like, I'll be down with this. I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll see how we get on. Mm. And I've just I've just so so much, just enjoyed it. Okay. Um, and I, I just can't wait to play more. Like the tension's already raising and raising and raising, and I'm like not even finished episode one. Wow, that's pretty good, especially considering you haven't haven't seen the films. Do you know much about any of the characters prior to going in? I am Groot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know any of others? No. <laughs> nice. That's probably a really good way of going into those sort of games and, and mediums where you don't have any I preconceptions. That 
I, I'd heard of that last so it was fine. Okay. But yeah, I am Groot was pretty much it. <laughs> so yeah, I am kind of going in a little bit blind because I don't know the story, but yeah, it's 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 hooked me. It's been so much fun. So, okay. so much fun. I think the, the you know there were a ton at the studio. I think uh, the management was mm. the main issue, uh, not obviously doing the their. Um, Engine. Engine. Your engine, yeah, yeah giving it, any. it. Um, but again, that was due to management. But like the writers and everything, you know what I mean? They were Could when they were on it, they were, they were a solid team, not well, massively. The one thing that I, I've disliked about it, uh, Batman's was on point with movement, so when you're walking around, it's, it's pretty easy to do that. Yeah, it's pretty tight, apparently. yeah. Guardians isn't, yeah. This apparently that was the one that really showed that they didn't have a physics engine, yeah. Um, so Honestly, I'm, I'm trying to go to one place, but you have to stand in a certain spot to be able to select something. And you're just like, oh my gosh, just play the radio! <laughs> just play the radio! And yeah, there's some weird flashback going on. And I'm, I'm, it is like the story is really great. The being able to have to do the action so, so quickly with all the different buttons and different directions that you're having to do it. And the fact that I'm having to learn to do this with a keyboard and mouse. Okay. At the same time, and I'm not used to keyboard and mouse for. 22 years it's, it's quite difficult to do um but yeah it's, it's very very tricky um i love the fact that it's just keeping me on my toes all the time all the time it's like you've got to keep going um but yeah the downside walking anywhere <laughs> sounds like when you mentioned the uh selecting items like with the old resident evil things really you have to like press x on everything like try to pick it up i mean resident evil weren't too bad because it's yeah the twinkle but there were some games where it was just like Bloody nightmare on PlayStation One. Just press X. I'm like, I'm stood at the fucking box of ammo. Pick up the ammo. You're like <laughs> moving around, like just pick up the fucking ammo. God's sake, man. Heavy rain. <laughs> heavy, well, yeah. Heavy, heavy rain. rain. <laughs> yeah, they, they. Yeah, they. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> at least with heavy rain, didn't have tank controls where you had to somehow like do a three point turn to get the place. I like to tank. The end. Tank makes sense. Right's always right. <laughs> left's always left forwards always forward it's like it's it makes sense you just you know don't don't this tank, <laughs> tank controls don't hate him yeah. <laughs> only for when you have to pick up items yeah picking up items was a bitch i'll, I'll admit that but <laughs> it made sense <laughs> so jack what have you been playing well now you've got over your tank controls Firstly, I'm going to have to talk about a little scenario today. Uh, these boxer shorts have been giving me right rifle right my bollocks. <laughs> nice! And I like that you wait until we were recording to, uh, <laughs> yeah. to, let, us know this. to let us know this fact. You know like how boxer briefs cook your testicles in a nice way? Well, imagine if this cup was all of a sudden David Bowie's hand in the movie Labyrinth. That's kind Ooh. of what's been going on today. So I just wanted everyone to know that. But besides that, <laughs> I've been You've just put a really horrible image in my head of Bowie. I don't like the idea of that. Well, his bulge was devastating enough for me. Um, I've been playing the lovely game. That's a really bad intro for this game as well, because this game's beautiful. Um, and so we're going to imagine your bollocks <laughs> and then a really beautiful game. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the game Gris, or Gris, as we would say it if we were common like me, but I think it's pronounced Gris, which That's is right. grey in... Like Greece. Uh, <laughs> grey in Italian? I can say it's in Italian, but I... Uh, which is a little indie game, and I'm a bit gutted that we recorded our game of the year quite early, because that kind of took over my game of the oh, year. Oh, would it have been, would it have taken over? It did. It's um, wow. one of my favorite games of this generation. It's very special. It's kind of nearly perfect. Wow. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of difficulty, which I've heard a lot of reviewers moan about, which I was like, but not every game has to be difficult just to be difficult. And it kind of, there's a game style I call Transcendental Games. I'm going to fucking coin that right I was right going to say, is that coin? Should we add in a little... <laughs> yeah, that is... Um, it's a long word you've just used there. I know, but... Can you spell it? The type... No. <laughs> uh, that's the kind of game like Journey, 
mm -hmm. like that where it's you know it's just an experience and you absorb it emotionally and you kind of just feel and you kind of sometimes not sure everything about the game but you just know it's about you know it touches you in a way like a good song without mm -hmm. lyrics does you know when you hear music like classical music and there's no singing you go you, you feel something from that and this uh, game does that and it's the art style it's all hand drawn as well it looks fucking phenomenal there's quite it's quite you know abstract in its way as well it's, it's really so like colorful, trees yeah and trees with like square like a um, leaf but it's like just a square and you use so them as using a platform isometric straights to sort of form yeah so it's a very you know stylish way of it all um like unlike journey it actually has game mechanics that actually go through the game as well so uh, there's a you can turn into like this massive square which is a weight so then you can break down into things but then you can also yeah it's there's a lot to it uh, not a lot to it but there's it kind of keeps developing so you, there's a bit where you can swim but then you can swim like out of one bit of water into another bit of water and it like use it to get up places and stuff okay. there's and again it, it really develops slowly through it and it's a relatively short game but i'm quite down with that and so it's is it more of a uh, puzzle platform platformer or kind of it's more of a just like a little platformer but it's yeah the music in it's great it's kind of reminds me of Ziga ross um uh, if they had a child with van gelas um uh, for a bit um uh, it's just really really quite something special you're playing it and you're like you know what this is something special again the game looks great sounds great plays great it's really tight uh, and it's just really nice playing it i've just yeah it's really like wow this is kind of perfect wow well, perfect is a not something you often hear in in any form of art, no no um, I'm, I'm not down with the perfect game i say tetris is a perfect game because it, it is a perfect game yeah, but, but uh, over time it's been proven to be yeah it is well it, i think when it first came out it was kind of perfect really mm. um again you know i say it's nearly perfect that's so probably some things but for me i've just gone you know what i've lapped it up loved it it's something i think everyone should play it's uh yeah very, very only heard good. good things about it and if it's going to become your game of the year for last year yeah it's uh, it just i mean i can i remember seeing the, the adverts for it and trailers and I was like oh that looks you know really nice and stuff and then but actually playing it I've gone well actually this is really good how it's actually got mechanics and it builds up very slowly and, and it's just really easy to play again it's something you can just play uh, some people moan about replayability but I probably could replay it again because it's very short and it's good you would replay it Believe it or not, people, there was a time when you actually just repl replayed games because they were good. <laughs> <laughs> not For because you got uh, a, a game plus or what, a new game plus. It was just you got a, a new suit or yeah. you got a cosmetic yeah. item or you got yeah. a, a, new, <laughs> a new dildo axe. It was just <laughs> okay. a good game and this is just a really good game. It's really, really, yeah, can't praise it enough. Anyone? Buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it now! It's available on Nintendo Switch and PC. <laughs> it's like this bit with uh, this uh, crow that's trying to get you. And um, it was this is over tender bit with uh, a uh, turtle. And I was really excited when I saw the turtle come out. I was just like, yeah, you got, again, I don't want to spoil it too much, but you got to just play it. There's little moments like that where it just go, captures something really nice. So, yeah, it's a good game. So you hated it, yeah? Yeah, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, would you get me a fucking drink? I'm not going to ask you again. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so for the main discussion this episode we're discussing xbox 360 versus playstation 3 uh two giants of the uh consoles in recent times and 
probably one of the biggest generations we've had, especially due to the lifespan of them. I think they both spanned for about nine to ten years. Yeah, ten than, years ish. Longer than any of this. Um, and because of that, they're, they're cornered into so many of us as, as minds, and everyone has an opinion as to who they think's better. I don't know if. Uh, if everyone's going to agree with that, but um, I think uh, I think one of the unique things about this generation is because of the length it went on, I certainly had both of those consoles. Um, and I certainly went from having one of them at the beginning to playing one of them at the end, um, mainly because the consoles broke halfway through. <laughs> and rather than buying the same one again, bought the other one, because why wouldn't you? Um, but for me, I, I always thought that the PS3 was a stronger console. Um, Mainly because I was PS2 kids and I didn't really want to change and go to Microsoft. Um, and it had a Blu-ray player, it had Linux compatibility. It was it was an all-in-one piece of piece of kit. Um, the army used it. Have you ever seen it? Was it the army or? Yeah, they had mm -hmm. hundreds of. Yeah, they PS3. turned them into supercomputers, didn't they? Because they yeah. were insanely cheap to buy. So you could buy ten, stack them up together, and have a computer for a supercomputer for three grand as opposed to 300 grand um, and because of that they were much more uh, movable they were more disposable if one of them broke um, for when they were in the armies or for any other uh, small uh, enterprises so that was the, something that the Xbox was never going to be able to do because that wasn't their marketing scheme they went for the more online aspects and the more Sociable. Sociable and the more digital game. I mean, their XDA was massive, so. Yeah, yeah, it was. It kind of ushered the era of indie games with games like Braid and stuff like that. They were, you know, in limbo. That was a time where indie games really came back on the scene. It's been there. I mean, it's the indie games started in the 80s with hobbyists on the, you know, Commodore 64 stuff programming. So, um, yeah, that really. Um, really pushed it into the new modern era but uh, I mean I've changed my opinion I originally liked the 360 it was the one I owned mm -hmm. uh, but many it, of them no I've not had many I've, I'm on my second one you know that's uh, no, not bad no, yeah that's my first good. one did all right um, but in retrospect well, after then getting a PS3 at the end, well, at the start of this generation uh, and starting to find some of that. There was a lot more unique games on the PS3, which makes me probably lean to that more now. Um, and, well, we'll probably go into that later about how PlayStation 3 kind of brought it back towards the end. Well, the... PlayStation 3 didn't start too great. The 360 kind of hit it out of the pot. I mean, Dead Rising was one of the first games. So and Xbox that was had a year on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And when PlayStation started, it was backwards compatible. My PlayStation that I own is still backwards compatible. Um, and then they turned that off after they got rid of the Linux thing, which was a massive controversy. Mm -hmm. um, which I don't think I've ever really forgiven them for. Um, and they're still trying to catch up now by getting that backwards compatibility into PS4s. And, um, yeah, they decided to do PS now. Yeah. Which is shit. It, <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's so, so shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, at least Xbox have got it right with Game Pass. You don't stream them, you install them. Yeah. Whereas PlayStation, if your internet goes down, you're fucked, you ain't playing that game. True. It's a streaming service, it's Netflix. True. <laughs> Netflix but for games. <laughs> anyway, without without wrong generation. <laughs> this generation, yeah. Wrong generation. We'll do that next gen. <laughs> we'll come back to the PS4 and the Xbox. <laughs> but yeah, the the three sixty start. I mean, like Dead Rising was a reason to buy the three sixty. That game, like, it took Huge. a long time. I think this generation to see a next gen game where you go. That's the next gen like dead rising was the next gen game because you saw that you've never seen that many zombies on the screen at once you've no. never seen someone interact with all their might and you can pick up this you can put this on the zombies and you can do this it was just like that much what yeah like, what this is you know 
you can eat this pie or you can pie the zombie in the face. You can dress up in any clothing in the store. You can, you know, it was crazy to see. And um, that in itself, you know, the Xbox 360 started so strong, stuff like that. And then there was Oblivion that was out. Then Halo 3, which, I mean, again, eSports is here now pretty much because of Halo 3, because that was on ESPN with Chris Puckett in the dickety dome headshot. <laughs> he was the coolest fucking commentator ever. I love that guy. Um, that was really loud. Yeah, no, sorry, I kind of moved. Uh, <laughs> but Chris Puckett was really loud, so. That really hurt. It's in context. Um, and, yeah, the yeah, you had Gears. But again, these were all kind of multiplayer games. The party chat was was a great feature. I could st at university, I was still talking to my friends from the hometown simply for the party chat. We would watch videos or DVDs, and we would all pause it. Be in a party chat, they'd be in a chat. We go right, one, two, three, play, and we'd all you know roughly be in the same place. That was groundbreaking, wasn't it? That was yeah. That was something that. I don't think anyone really expected. No. I don't think PlayStation expected that. I mean, that no. stole so much of their market because of people weren't even playing games. They just you wanted it as a way of communicating with their friends, to, as you say, watch films even. Um, but because you could play anything on your Xbox and still have that chat, it just made the the USP of right. You're playing this with other people. You want to get an Xbox. The yeah. the PlayStation. Um, online system I think was free when it came out but it had, didn't have any good no, communication I think you could only no, talk whilst in the same game as somebody yeah. else yeah. Um, which was just shit yeah it, it was pretty shit I mean like I, I was always 360 I got 360 basically because uh, although I'd been PS1 PS2 always always been down down with those I kind of didn't know anything about the PS3 it, it just hadn't entered my radar com totally. I saw the 360, marketing was on point for me. I was like, uh, this thing is in my face. And because I was uh, still living at home when it, it came out, and I was just moving out, I was just in the process of moving out and moving away, um, for me it was like, well, this is my TV. I hook that thing up to the internet, and I've got TV. Yeah. I've got games, I've got... You know, I can talk to my friends. I can do so many things in this one, this one entertainment machine, and it, it handled it until you got the three red lights of doom, um, or until your dad takes it to a man and it comes back chipped, <laughs> um, <laughs> which ultimately killed it. Does this thing, um, <laughs> uh, from Curry's? Sorry, no, not the Curry's guys. It's another guy. <laughs> Lots of guys. <laughs> Um, so I mean I, I've I have had five three sixties. So this five. is it. Like that's something that doesn't really get considered, right? So Xbox is uh, one of the things that was that makes them more more appealing was the fact that they were like a hundred, maybe one hundred and fifty quid cheaper. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to buy twice, and the Xbox you buy cheap, you buy twice. Yeah, kind of price, but. With Xbox, you have to buy like five or six of them because they kept breaking. It depends how you how you dealt with it, and if you installed like I did a lot, it tend to be all right. I mean, Halo Three, the, the recommend you run it from disc because it runs better on like the multiplayer. But a lot of the like single player games, as long as you installed it onto the hard drive, then it's just like what a modern console does now: reads a disc, goes, "Yeah, that's the game, okay," mm -hmm. and then you know it. You, typically ran a lot better and I think that's what helped mine mm. uh, survive so long. Had I known that when I was, I had my Xbox, probably would have survived longer. Well, a lot of people didn't, surprisingly a lot of people don't know about because it, it's not, it doesn't really tell you, it's something you just go into, I think you have to press X to yeah. look at the uh, stuff and it says install. Uh, but yeah, again, the 360 started off strong with exclusives, but near the end it very much died down because they went fuck it, we got the money. Mm. Well, what they did, what they did really well was their new IPs were really good, or their continuation of new IPs were really good. So you mentioned Forza and Halo and Gears, like those were yeah. like their best games throughout their entire life cycle, and it was each iteration of those was their their big ones. Whereas PlayStation, they launched with, um, I think their big exclusive was Resistance Fall of Man. 
Yeah. Now, I, I loved that game because there was a level based in Nottingham, mm. which was the only reason I wanted to play it. Granted, the game wasn't that great, but that to me was, was really fun. But other than that, I mean, they didn't really have any good exclusives. They had, what, Hell, uh, Heavenly Sword, I think, was, was quite yeah. good. Um, but then it wasn't really until Uncharted hit the scenes and mm. um, Uncharted and the uh, Big Little Planet. Little big, big Little Planet, planet was Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet. Yeah, planet. I always get that bloody. So yeah. I've been drinking for it. Yeah, what do you expect? Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, what was the other one? Yeah, God of War came out. Was Last called. of Us. Yeah. Last of Us. Well, that was I know end. it was the end, but it's still the same. Well, this term. is what I was saying. Like, we're. Because the 360 started off really strong. It said you had, like, Dead Rising and a lot of different things, but then it literally came Halo, Gears, Forza, and that was it. And then while they got complacent, Crackdown. Uh, well, there was only two Crackdowns really. And still then, there, though. Yeah, but they were. <laughs> Fable Two. Fable, Fable Two. two. Um, and then while Peter they, Marlin knew did a Peter Marlin knew and well, he's always Alan done Peter Marlin, yeah. Uh, yeah, Alan, Alan Wake that was decent. But uh, Alan Wake compares to Heavy Rain. Mm, it's true. They... Can you walk in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not really. They got complacent. Three sixty did. Mm, and, they did. Uh, while that happened, uh, PlayStation just brought it back. Mm. Out of nowhere. I mean, for your last kind of game to re to release on a console, it is something like The Last of Us really put a stamp on that in itself is the reason I think partly a reason why uh, the PlayStation 4 did so good because good it brought it, it brought people back into the PlayStation went, look we're still relevant here we are yeah. while well, Xbox were going oh we're fine we're Xbox they may not they got a few PlayStations back in people's homes and reminded people and uh, People, you know, picked up a PlayStation just because of that game. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I don't deny that, like, the, the PlayStation 3, like, by far was a, is a better machine. It's, it, it didn't die. Well, it <laughs> had a yellow times. light of death. Yeah. Not as bad as the rain. didn't mean your computer broke, but... Well, exactly, you know, the, the 360 was, was always destined to break. You know, you just didn't know how long you, what lottery numbers you'd got with it as to how long it was going to last. Um, and it was always when you were playing a goddamn game. Mm. <laughs> it's always when you were about to go on party chat with your friends. <laughs> oh, sorry, party chat died. <laughs> it's text them on your Nokia 3310 to tell them that, you, that your party chat's not working. Oh shit, I've run out of credit. <laughs> Well, that's at the time that came out. I mean, that was a very big reason as to why you were doing so. Still, with the days where you didn't have unlimited minutes on your phones, like you, yeah. as a way of speaking to your friends for over hours, this is a free way of doing it. Exactly. Unless it broke, as you say. And unless it broke when you were just talking to your pie chat. Uh, <laughs> but like, I mean, Microsoft did what they still do now: launch exclusive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, it's very much a Microsoft product. Though, it's I mean, a very much a Microsoft Americano at its finest. Yeah, so like Saints Row obviously came to three sixty first. Uh, what else did I have on here? Um, I had Mass Effect, obviously. Mass yeah. Effect, yeah, that was that was that originally was a Microsoft was done by Microsoft Studios the first yeah. one, which is arguably the best one as well, in my opinion. But um, mm, I, I, I I'd be inclined to agree to maybe. Um, but I think PS3, in retrospect, did have the better exclusives, and it had, again, there's a lot more exclusives on there. And if you searched, there was a lot more interesting titles on there. Um, Definitely. The place uh, the 360 just felt very, especially near the end, very samey. Same kind of games were coming out. Yeah, I, I mean, with the 360 though, I mean, that Microsoft did go try and go balls deep with like, you know, your dance centrals, your connectimals, or whatever they called it. Oh, you know, the, the I, remember, they, I remember that being announced, that was horrendous. They tried. Oh my god, that was awful. Get fit with Mel B. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> you know, what about the Star Wars one? They've got Han Solo doing a fucking giant yeah, or something was, like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, Dancing to going solo. 
going solo. Going solo. solo. Oh my god. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks for reminding me yeah, of something. That. I've, I've repressed that memory. I mean, although Connect was shocking, and still is shocking to this day. I, I just thought it was the fact that I was doing a small space. No, I played it in a larger space, mm -hmm. like very recently in the last couple of years. Still don't work. It's <laughs> shocking. Um, <laughs> but I, I liked the enthusiasm they showed because mm. PlayStation moved from and apparently didn't come until a little bit later on. No, so it, was, it was still iToy hype from the PlayStation 2 game days. I mean, and that's still better than Connect. <laughs> that's an interesting point in terms of how they challenged motion controls. Yeah, the, the move didn't work at all uh, no one really bought into that but the move that sort of those controllers are now being used in the VR the move, I thought the move was alright I remember a friend of she had the move and I was actually like you know this this works pretty decent okay From maybe it just got a bit Wii. lazy in sort of some designs didn't I'm pretty sure in heavy rain you had to actually like dry the dude's head by shaking the thing I, yeah, I did weird. play that on uh, heavy rain with the move at said friend's house, um, but I was very drunk, so it, it took me half hour. Well, it didn't take me half hour. It took me a long time to open a cupboard door. I was like, "Fucking can't! It's not even this hard to open a real cupboard door, man." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think the connect. I actually, I actually had a connect, and I remember quite a few drunken parties playing the connect. Uh, it was really fun but i can't tell if that was because we were drunk and we didn't mind that it didn't work it's not going to be better than the weed sports though is it when no. you're drunk because let's no. be honest weed golf pissed is and we bowling pissed i was gonna say bowling probably bowling. Bowling. Fucking, golf's good when you piss tennis was quite good when you're pissed tennis, as well yeah. <laughs> we we've had some good sessions at uni golf, golf piss because you had to take it do you know what i did once with the wee fit board mm -hmm. I, I actually did we did uh, drunk yoga once on the Wii Fit board because that's fucking hilarious. That sounds fun. No, About you, as much fun as standing in shite. You try and balance when you fucking piss. Yeah, no, no, I don't. I just, <laughs> no, I don't, don't want to try that. This guy can't walk in a straight line when he's pissed. How do you do fucking yoga? <laughs> I think I might. I'd pay to see that. <laughs> mm, mm. You, are you available for two pence? No. <laughs> no, not even slightly. <laughs> But <laughs> mentioning that we, I think that's something that we is kind of the elephant in the room of the seventh generation console. We is the winner, like in terms. Yeah, of yeah. What better than the 360? Yeah, in terms yeah. of sales, in terms of yeah, uh, it was. But in terms of sales, in terms of you know motion control, motion controls, in terms of you know just and being the more popular of games. I mean of. Yeah, a a super catchy on, menu yeah. tune. Of course there was. A lot of shovelware. <laughs> there's a lot of hidden gems on there. There's a lot of, hell of a lot of shovelware though. There I mean, is. I'd say I'd for, you know, as, as much as I love Nintendo, 360 was a fair console. In that regards, there were some great games on the 360. The games, you know, there's a reason why it's like my second most, well, my second biggest collection. True. Mm. And I think it's, Worth saying as well, it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges, really. I mean, like, you, you, most people that had a Wii also had a... Most yeah. gamers that had a Wii also had a, either a PlayStation yeah. or, a, yeah, or exactly. an Xbox. The uh, Nintendo is always the extra one, isn't it? It was, yeah. Nintendo. Nobody really just has a Switch, do they? Mm, no. No, Again, no one ever just has a Nintendo. It's Not still anymore, goes, anyway. It's still no. carrying on now. Nobody really just has a Switch. They, no they, like, they either have a PC with it or a PlayStation or an Xbox. No one just had a GameCube. That's no, the thing. It's always been the same. No, it's from 64. Yeah, it's people had a PlayStation 64. and a 64. Mm. Always, it's been the same for, for years. And that's that's a, a great way to be. Because Nintendo's always been the party pack. Well, they've, they're, they're, they're just, they've got their own pocket. And it's mm. like, yeah, they don't even... I don't even think they'd just go for that fucking... It's a war anymore because you're just like even if we lose, it doesn't matter because we we do what we do. Um, and I think it was this generation that made them really double down on that when they created the way to not compete with Xbox or, or PlayStation, and, and because of that, they're still been able to maintain that marketing strategy and not go bust because there was concerns when it came to GameCube era that they would that they wouldn't be able to compete with Microsoft and Sony's spending so much money on on consoles and, and on hardware 
because they've got obviously other sales of stuff helping them. But um, I mean, it's, yeah, the, the PS3 was a massive powerhouse though mm. when it first came out. I mean, what, it was what, bloody what, big enough. Five hundred. Yeah, yeah I think. It was a lot of money. Yeah, it was. I, I both of them were when they came out. They were both. I think. I think Xbox lot. was about three fifty, and PlayStation yeah, was four fifty, or something like that. No, I want to say it was more. I think on release it was like nearly six hundred quid. No, I got it not long after release. I didn't pay yeah. more than five hundred for. I know I got it just after I got a new job where I got loads more money. I was like, right, I'm going to treat myself, and I bought a PS3 and. Still in there, so I don't think it works. I think it, the CD drive's fucked on it, but that's well, 12 years old now, so yeah, that's up, eh? maybe longer. Uh, but it was a great piece of hardware. Um, but in as much as we say it was a great piece of hardware, the, the Xbox 360 ran at a better frame rate mm -hmm. most of the time. It was that was because of the architecture of the PlayStation 3 because they wanted to go away from Windows because of Microsoft. So they made their own architecture. However, that shot them in the foot because no one could program for it, really. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. It did take them a long time to get used to it, and that really hindered the sales because if you've not got developers understanding the software, they're going to lean towards the other one. Gonna, yeah. I think there was a, I can't remember any of the big ones, but I know there was certainly about five or six um, PlayStation exclusives in the first three years that became multi-platform because it just took, was too difficult for them to build it on PS3 so they had to try Xbox and I think oh yeah I'll see if I can remember some of them by the end of this but it was certainly um, hindering their sales yeah because of how difficult it was it was just, yeah it was a case of you couldn't really port anything yeah it was hard and to port there was, there was a lot of games I, rem I do remember that happening because uh, they were just completely different machines Mm. That was it, yeah. They got the third party if Xbox did mm. down to Definitely. G. Yeah, they did. But then the the always kinda had the third party down. And the, the, the Xbox was a, a you know, it was kind of like the the dark horse really. It came out of nowhere and people went, actually this is a good little thing. I mean the first Halo was like somewhat else when you played that. The thing is when like three sixty came out they sold it as an entertainment system. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what it was. It didn't claim to be anything else. It claimed to be an entertainment system. And yeah, because it was still in the, the fight for the living room. It was yeah. the, the marketing thing, wasn't it? And and it, it which is was. strange considering that considering that Sony released theirs with the Blu-ray player, which was all the range then. I mean, Blu-ray is really huge. the cheapest Blu-ray player as well when it first mm. came mm. out. It really for was. For the price. It was a really good Blu-ray player. Still are. Yeah. Two buys. Blu-rays. Actually, Blu-rays are still quite a big thing, aren't they? They are, yeah, yeah. You can still buy them if you don't like use Netflix or any other film, film streaming service. Still cases and stuff now, I think. Really? Stuff like mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's another thing you got to give Sony credit for. If it wasn't for the PS2, you probably wouldn't have DVDs as big as they are. And if it wasn't for the PS3, Blu-rays wouldn't be as big as they are. Yeah. Um, big pusher on that. And then X, what, well, Microsoft tried the HD, remember that? Remember mm -hmm. that being a thing? HD DVD things. Yeah, they tried, yeah. didn't they? Bless yeah. them. Yeah, they got to try. Yeah. Points for trying. Uh, yeah, they probably wasted a lot of money on that. They probably <laughs> wasted a lot of their development on trying to do that rather than getting a console out sooner in the life cycle and not hitting that stagnation that you mentioned earlier in, in terms of their releases. Mm. I mean, I, like, I got a 360 a lot of my friends had 360s and I found the online easier. And I couldn't use the wireless dongle thing that went at the back because that was just ridiculous. Um, but like, I think if I remember rightly, I think our PS3 runs on Wi-Fi. Yeah. Quite, it's... quite, just on its own. Yeah, you have to buy extra bits for the. The 360, you have to buy the wireless adapter, which oh my god, was the worst thing on the planet. It wasn't quite as bad as Connect, but it, it was pretty bad. Um, you could be right next to the goddamn router, it still wouldn't pick it up. Oh god. <laughs> So, you know, you had to Ethernet that thing up if you were going to do anything remotely internet based. Um, yeah. And when when you've got it in your bedroom, the, the route was quite far away. Xbox were forerunner in that, though, really. They really got console internet gaming right. Mm. They, they did. did. And uh, especially when you compare it to Sony, where 
I think they had DRM at the beginning, um, which meant that it was much more difficult to play things online. And, and also, they didn't have achievements, if I remember right. They didn't have the trophies until after PlayStation had done that. Because I remember... I mean, Xbox. So, yeah, so then until <laughs> Xbox did it. Well, yeah. beers. Beers does something to your voice, don't it? That's um, but yeah, I remember not connecting my PlayStation to the internet and uploading the software to allow you to get trophies. And there's some achievements that I did within um, the PlayStation 3 era. So beating Metal Gear Solid 3 with a pacifist, play, pacifist playthrough um, and not dying all the way through is something that would have been a trophy or would have been an achievement, but it was before those were introduced. And it's like, well... Yeah, maybe I should have got those. Maybe I should go back and do them. But had I been had that been a game on PS uh, Xbox three hundred and sixty, you wouldn't have had that issue. And that was another sign of um, Microsoft being ahead of the times in in so many things with with that console. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, they ushered microtransactions as well. Well, gift and a kiss. Um, yeah, DLC. They, they went in hard for some which yeah. so I don't mind some DLC I mean when it comes to horse armor you can fuck <laughs> off uh, when it can come to the, even Alan Wake where it's like you want to see the true ending well you're going to have to buy two additional episodes that's when it got oh, fucking stupid uh, but I mean well look at the state of affairs now it's you know <laughs> kind of look at those days with bloody roast in their glasses um so or the fact was, that they were, got away with it means that we're in the state we are now. Yeah. Um, so there was, you know, 360 did, Microsoft did bring a lot, good or bad, to the table. Um, definitely with that. But again, yeah, I think it was a social thing, wasn't it, really? Mm. That made 360. Was, yeah. what, I mean, I got a 360, like you said, because my friends had a 360. And yeah, that social aspect of it really made it. The I console spend, to go to. It, yeah. I spent so much time online with strangers playing rock band, and like and, and band no it was band hero on the way. Uh, yeah, rock band playing that with people online, random people, like, and I used to do all the singing achievements for them. Nice. Because of like they do like they could smash out the guitar and the drums. They could do the singing on easy. Mm -hmm. Getting to medium and hard, they couldn't do it. So like, I. I used to do that for people. I used to be the person to have contact. Nice. And for me, without the 360, like without getting that 360 back way back when, um, I wouldn't have the name I have now. Okay. So it kind of defines you as a game of that console. Yeah. I, was, I mean, Lola Sunny Butter was a randomly generated name by Xbox. <laughs> Thanks, wow! Xbox. Look at that. Much love. Insight into who you are. <laughs> can't even can't even come up with your own name. I know. Can't even come up with my own names. That's how lazy I fucking am. I use a randomly generated name that I got when I was like eighteen. <laughs> it works. It works, doesn't it? So. You don't forget me. <laughs> Funny story about Rob. And you know me, uncle Richard. Yes. When uh, my never met, but don't know about. <laughs> uh, when uh, my brother Nicky was living at his, he, my brother went in once at kind of early hours in the morning. Was he drunk? Find my uncle Richard drunk. With Rocket playing like Guitar Hero in his fucking box of shorts, just smashed, just like, mm, just rocking out to him, sent in the front room. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Nick, let's go on it. He's like, what, are you are, Rich? <laughs> like, yeah, man. Nice one. Hey, <laughs> <see. laughs> that was what Rock Hero I was, did. I was going to say that. Yeah. Loads of people did that. Loads of people that weren't even uh, gamers or anything like that, they got attached to, to Rock Band. DJ Hero yeah. was better. DJ was loads better. DJ was fucking really good. But uh, yeah, Rocket, that was a big thing. But again, yeah, I, I remember playing Halo. I mean, we played a fucking lot of Halo 3 online. And then now I remember playing, I was with Ted's playing Halo at like 3, 4 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Speaking with just Americans and like, they joining into our like... How did that go to, talking to Americans? It was alright, well they, they joined in the lobby and then we were singing Queen, me and Tez, and they're like, wait, they were like, you guys British? It's like, what time is it over? They were like, it's four in the morning, they're like, <laughs> what? And you all just sat there singing Queen? And we were like, mama. <laughs> <laughs> and they got involved and then other people got involved. And How was it playing uh, Call of Duty online? 
Well, there was a lot of young kids that you had to... Yeah, mm. the online world was a bit of dickish. <laughs> yeah. As well. So was a, yeah. I, I, I don't was, think that's I was changed, part man. of it. Yeah, I was young and silly. But, uh, but people, it still goes on now. It still goes on now. Not mm. like with you, but in general, you hear it. Oh, and yeah. I don't, I, sometimes I don't know if it's as bad as it was. Like when it oh, was, yeah, I it's think it was a lot. Actually, this point, I think it was a lot worse back then because there know. was no. I don't know. Nah, maybe because I don't. Maybe because I'm older and I don't use it as much. But yeah. um, it was a, just a horrible place. The Wild West. It. Yeah, it was the Wild West. There was a lot less control over it. There was a lot less uh, monitoring. Well, the Xbox you can select in the 360 what type of chat room or players you want to get with, and one of them's rowdy. To get so it, you kind of got you into the people where it's like, yeah, you're a dick and that's just being nice. You didn't say that. If anyone said you were a dick, you was like, is that it, mate? Really? <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, bless you. <laughs> All right, let me show you how it's done. And then, yeah, no, you know. I mean, this is a game that got released very recently uh, called Atlas. Mm-hmm. And um, there's this people from the, the West and people from the East who are pretty much just on the open chat that's on across the game on a game that got released in December and it's on its about its 10th patch now <laughs> wow it's pretty broken yeah it sounds it came yeah. from the creators of Ark okay. <laughs> they fucked it up they copied and pasted and it broke <laughs> um, and uh, yeah they literally sh- like type racist remarks to each other constantly it's dark Dark, dark very place. very dark world and uh, I've, I've, one of my friends got um, got trolled playing Rust I think it was by French people, kids they were they were insulting him in French he said you could be insulting me but I have no idea what you're saying <laughs> if, I, if I used to hear a French person I just used to either say the phrase is je n'ai pas really loud je n'ai pas Je n'ai pas, and every time I try to talk, je n'ai pas, or jambon, because it's just, you know, everyone loves jambon, or à la, à la piscine, or la bibliothèque, ah, la bibliothèque, <laughs> <laughs> just say, yeah, wow. basically, just say random French, but well, the je n'ai pas was my favourite, just because any time they try to talk back, I just go, je n'ai pas, je n'ai pas, and it does just like, you know, they're trying to talk, and just, yeah, so yeah, that was kind of a bit more of the playfully. Yeah, so I mean, so, yeah, that was the fun of the, the 360, you know, being able to play with randomers. Yeah. And get insulted. So, yeah, so insulted for your, the, your, your, however much it was. It for miss, you know, sometimes you either got, you know, it got rowdy and stuff, or it, you know, it was quite friendly as well. I've, it's equal measures. I've had as many, you know, verbal battles as I've had general you know nice conversations and play mm. with people and yeah but know. i think this is a testament more to people rather than it is to the consoles no definitely i mean the xbox was the one that opened it up opened the door <laughs> to this yeah. rather than people playing on pc these, and these crazy bastards yeah <laughs> and i guess pc kind of has a different community already so yeah that's a completely different kettle of fish yeah a whole um, new world over there so certainly um so with with um, with, with the, the generation lasting so long, we spoke about uh, it lasting quite. Well, but they saw loads of different iterations of them, mm-hmm. um, and to me, the the what convinced me to get a place to, uh, to get the Xbox when my PlayStation started, um, the fans started being louder than the TV, um, <laughs> was getting the Elite and everybody else that I had. Yeah. The, the Elite was such a great piece of kit you didn't have to have all these peripherals i think the worst thing they had was the power pack was like it's about the size of house yeah <laughs> yeah but there's nothing as bad as it was before the elite no no it was always a big power pack yeah i mean it was the size of like a mansion before like first time around and then yeah shrunk down to the size of a house <laughs> but do you think because that went on and because they were trying this this new model of different size versions of each console different slim or uh, 60 gig or 30 gig or all these different versions of playing do you think that was because they weren't ready to release a new one yet or do you think that was because um 
Could squeeze a bit more, wouldn't it? I'd be just trying to squeeze I think some more. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, Not the thing is, and then, uh, just yeah, squeezing a bit more. You see that a lot in uh, consoles anyway, where it's getting to the end of the life cycle and they just need you know a bit more to carry over until the uh, till the next console. I mean, the Wii did it, there's a version of the Wii which is really tiny. Mm. Um, you're making this the same, same generation, isn't it? Yeah. Um, very much born from well, PlayStation kind of started that with the PlayStation 2 and then they did the Slim this so is true yeah kind of, okay. but I mean the, that you saw three versions of well four versions of this 360 it was the original arcade kind of one then there was the just the kind of standard norm one <laughs> the boring one then there was the Leap and they then the there S, was they? then they had the S I think or whatever the little other black thing Um and so I think it again because it was such a I mean it, yeah it was 10 years I mean I through the 360 I'd been to college that's when it first started done college finished uni and got like jobs before the even the next yeah, that's console the... came out and, and got, you know found, found me as well yeah, <laughs> look, they didn't even. I didn't even register it. Well, no, because the P- no, the PS4 came out before I met you. Yes, it did. It came out before I met you. Granted, it would have been about a year before I met Not you. Not much before. Or it was before. So that's why I didn't count. Yeah, yeah that's a crazy thought. Why should you? Why should you find ammo to scorn him with? Um, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that t- that <laughs> did. Everyone did change from who they were when they first started that console generation to who they were when they ended it. I mean, like for our generation, it was like we actually grew up. Yeah, I mean, like I got the PS3 like not long after I left home, mm. and ten years on, when I'm getting the PS4, it was. Well, you got to think there's, there's there's people now who grew who were adults who grew up with the 360. That was their. That was their snare. That was their Christmas wish list. Sort of thing, that yeah. was their thing. And now they're like, just, it's weird when you see people. Oh yeah, what well, got you into gaming? And like Call of Duty. And you're like fucking Call of Duty. And then you realise, yeah. well, actually, yeah, the, this age. So yeah, just because it just you don't think of it because of how long that that span went over. Yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day. They said their first, their earliest gaming memory mm-hmm. was was playing on the Nintendo DS. I felt old. <laughs> yeah. Really <Yeah>. old. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's bad. <laughs> but, you know, you, you kind of forget that, you know, not everybody's experienced like what we've experienced and what, what we had to put up with. <laughs> well, people just have different ages. I was going to say, no, no, like, I was gonna no, say no, you compare... Gaming you compare in when, general. When we, were, when we were that age. So, let's say throughout the 90s, you had seven different consoles yeah. that decade and as we said we had one console for yeah. 10 years so for since 2005 was when xbox came out you've had xbox 360 and you've had xbox one that's two consoles for them to remember mm. 2005 is 14 years ago that's fucking but it shows how far you know in general gaming and consoles have come for them to last that long um, yeah it's no longer murphy's law is it where no. they're getting better every couple of years let's uh, knock it out another one out a couple of years well, later. Be the, this, going back to the five year rule again what it, it used to be like do you think yes five years which now weirdly because of the how long that period was it feels like it's not it feels too premature now because it took a while for this generation to really kick in it was only what you know, 2017 really, really when yeah, this generation is on form now. Yeah, but I think that's because uh, how long it takes people to learn the kits. I think, as we mentioned earlier, the XDA, the uh, the the gaming community that Xbox released, meant that indie developers were able to get used to and familiar with how to develop games on the Xbox 360 really quickly. Well, uh, just because it was kind of Windows, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Whereas now you've got a much more complex piece of kit, so you probably don't get developers uh, understanding how it works until until they've actually got the console. So then you've got the two-year life cycle, which 
It's probably why 2017. I suppose it is, though, now you mentioned the indie, it's probably worth mentioning the indie side of Xbox. I think that's the biggest test. To me, the party chat was great, and, and Xbox Live was massive, as we say, but the indie is what kind of makes it makes it more makes it, to uh, Well, yeah, makes it a standout thing. And again, when Braid came out, that kind of ushered a whole new perspective of thinking about video games. Then you had games like Limbo, and then you had Fez, uh, Super Meat Boy. You Super know, Meat it Boy, was Team Meat was massive. It, it, it kind of ushered this whole new way of thinking about games, be it harking back to original games or original idea or singular vision or just taking a concept and going with it. And yeah, the the indie market really just boomed. And then the remaster, because then you started getting your... Uh, Monkey Island remaster that came out on 360 and stuff like that so there was a real big boom for stuff people wanted this type of stuff yeah it, but it also gave it gave players choice it gave you a choice to, to get these smaller games that were just as enjoyable and just as fun and interesting as your big releases so you didn't have to spend 40 quid to go and buy the biggest titles, which at the time when when the Xbox were releasing the games you just mentioned, some of the games that they were releasing were absolute shockers. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you get shit for your Avatar as well? Oh my god, I forgot about the Avatar. <laughs> oh, that was such a big thing, wasn't it? The yeah. cosmetics thing. Yeah, I've Imagine got loads of cosmetic shit. I bought loads. I've got a Mako from Mass Effect. I've got a fucking Vault Boy head. I've got the crank from Resident Evil. Did you pay for these? Yep. Uh, see, well, of course he did. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was with leftover because you always bought games and stuff or DLC, and you always had leftover of a point. Oh yeah, because they had the, it was their own currency. You couldn't just do. Yeah, I'm so. going to pay you the amount for the game. You had to buy yeah. in fifteen or well five, ten, fifteen denominations mm -hmm. of. So I just put the leftover points, or I'll I'll get the Resident Evil crank because I love Resident Evil, and the crank is one of the most important items in Resident Evil. Ever. But speaking of those this Avatar cosmetics, you did also get them for winning stuff, for achievements. Yeah, you did. Which was which is something that Oh, I wish they did now. I wish you would be able to get cosmetic stuff from completing the game. Yeah, it's loot boxes now, mate. Yeah, they monetized the shit out of yeah. that. Probably because people like you were like, Well, I got this extra thirty pence or <laughs> pound fifty. Here you go, let's buy a cream. <laughs> The, the the interesting thing about the two consoles, I was just, just double checking my dates, um, is the online functions. Mm -hmm. So obviously Xbox Live, Xbox Gold, whatever we're going to call it, um, has um, has been going on obviously for the last, well, how many, 10, 10 13 it years. Came out of release, so 2005, yeah. yeah. 14 years, and they have no date to shut it down. Okay. Still going. They've got no, there's no plans to shut it down as yet. Obviously, will be. I assume next, by next gen, it'll be shut down. Mm -hmm. um, but PlayStation, bearing in mind they shut down their PlayStation 2 servers not overly long ago. Um, what was it a couple of years? They shut the PS2 online down, which I didn't even know existed. <laughs> like, yeah. That was a thing. I knew it existed. It was just um, not very wide. Not many people used it. But they have announced they are shutting down the online for PS3. It's because Dark Souls, I mean, Demon Souls shut down, so they went, well, no one else is well, yeah, so anything yeah. else on it. That was the only thing people. No, it's, uh, they've announced it like for, is it War? 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 I don't know, Summer. Um, Warframe. Oh, yeah. It wasn't that. Anyway, I can't remember what the game was. Um, but it, it finally shut down, shuts down at the end of this month. Okay, well. Um, 1st of January 2019 will be the end of online on PlayStation, but Xbox. <laughs> Carry on. Probably wow. people still play Halo That's 3. What I mean, yeah. no. But like, the longevity of it, nobody's playing those games on PlayStation 3 for the online. I mean, I'm not saying there was the, all games on PlayStation 3 that were bad, they weren't, but they were very more, much more story driven games. The games that are great on PlayStation 3, in my opinion, are the story games like Last oh. of Us, Uncharted, those sorts of games, you know, that's what they, they had, mm -hmm. and they had good, good stuff going on for that. Xbox was always the multiplayer console to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why obviously it's carrying on. But yeah, if you always play games with your friends, you got an Xbox. 
yeah. if you if you wanted a great console that you could play a bloody good story game and play your your three Blu-rays that you may have kicking about the house. <laughs> the only the only Blu-ray I ever had was the one I got for free when I bought my PlayStation. You you own one Spider-Man didn't you? three. Yeah. You own Gravity. Oh, I thought you, no, I thought you thought about Blu-ray players, not right. actual Blu-ray discs. No, yeah, I bought Gravity on Blu-ray because it's Gravity and it's a pretty good film. I like Gravity. Is it? Yeah, I like Gravity. Um, but Don't you not Gravity, man? It's, it's I, like, I like what Gravity does for us as a society. Yeah, I think scientifically it's really good. As a film, it was a piece of shit, mate. But... <laughs> Maybe under the chat all the time. I'm going to digress. Nothing happened. What? Loads of stuff happened. I think we're going to digress, guys. Ah, we digressed a lot. <laughs> it's about being reborn, Griggs. Just. I don't know. It's good to be fair, it is just people playing around his face. Yeah, it is. I'm not being yeah, funny, yeah, it is. I really liked it. People. It's, like, it's, you know, people. it's, it's a spectacle. And plus, I watched it at the cinema in no, 3D, which on. was. I didn't. That was. Like, I didn't like 3D films, but that I was like, you have to watch it in 3D. It was like, this is what 3D is. This is what you can do with 3D. I thought that was Avatar. Nah, fuck that shit. That's just bloody popcorn. This with blue people in it. Yeah, but they did three D quite well. Yeah, I know. But this was like, yeah, but that was kind of like, oh look at us three D. This was like, it didn't matter if it was three D. It was just, it, you had to, you didn't watch it in three D. <laughs> you had to so be there, just, yeah, right? You, you had to be there. You don't know, all right? I'm gonna say know. people. <laughs> I don't know. You know. I'm gonna say people. It was the what's a face? Sandra Bullock. She's the only one that was in there, right? Yeah, what's a face? But, you know, there was a cameraman there. Well, no. What's his name? Uh, fucking George Clooney. Clooney's. Clooney's there. I don't think he did much in the film. He, he arrived. He was there. He, he rocked up. Looking all suave, having some coffee. Maybe, it's, uh, maybe I'm just not a fan of Sandra Bullock. Maybe. No, that's understandable. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> this makes it into the podcast. <laughs> We're doing well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Spray yeah. the barrel with it. <laughs> So conclusion on the PlayStation and Xbox, <laughs> I think we've kind of hit. Yeah, no, 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 I think we've gone through it all. I mean, as, as I just said, you know, if you were a multiplayer, if you wanted to play an online multiplayer, you got an Xbox, because that's what everybody had. If you wanted a, a great console that would play some bloody good games, you know, your story games, you... Just, just if it, by the end of it, play, yeah, the PlayStation I've, had, like... I Everything. think if you look to the Metacritic scores, I think PlayStation at the top mm. twenty five games that are exclusive. I think it's PlayStation have like eighteen and yeah. I think like, like, Xbox like, smashed it at the start. Yeah, no, they, they completely annihilated it. They had and a then, year's head start, and they were able to get, as you said, everybody and their friends buying it. Yeah, and it was affordable. And they probably knew that they had the, the upper hand in that that they were the only ones there, and. They, they really got everybody to buy it and go buy no fuck all buy the PlayStation now. Mm. <laughs> fuck you, Sony. Um, and Sony had to sort of come in on the back foot and do overly well at actually getting it out there in, in people's living rooms and be probably a lot of people missed out. So a big part of it was price. And, and the fact that it was fucking expensive. Right? Massively it was just, so. just massively expensive. Because there were the, the boys on top. Am I way of summering it up? Summering summer in it from the depths of hell. Um, <laughs> in it. I thought you were up. just heading from winter to summer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the 360 was of that time. And that now, in retrospect, if you was to go back to that kind of generation of gaming, it's better off going to the PlayStation 3 because of what that can offer. But I think the 360 at its time, when it was around, was the one because of the social thing, because of the multiplayer, because of all of this. Now that's lacking. Mm. It's you think of the PlayStation because it's easier to go and play games on that now. But yeah, I think that was it was the punk. Mm -hmm. It was all the, you know, indie thing of the noughties, the bloody Brit, Brit pop of the 90s. It was just that thing of that moment where you just... Mm. 
that was it. Yeah. I, I, I just think it's possibly like, you know, if I if I had to go back and choose again, mm-hmm. if I'm the if I was the age I am now, I'd choose the PlayStation all day long, purely because of the kind of games that I enjoy now. Mm-hmm. But eighteen year old me who chose a three hundred and sixty back then. Even knowing what I know, even if the same knowledge as what I have now, but still being that 18 year old who still wanted to play games with her friends and do online multiplayer, to still choose the 360. Still choose the 360. That's fair. I See, mean, I, I don't think I'd go back and change the way I did. I had PlayStation first and then Xbox, uh, mm. the Xbox at the end of the life cycle. And by the time I had Xbox, all of my friends had it and it was up and running. I was able to go back and play a lot of those old games and it's, it's really fun. Um, and when PlayStation 3 came out, I was able to have the Blu-ray as well, which was, to me was like, oh yeah, I got a piece of kit. But I think you hit the nail on the head. I think with innovation and, and of its time, I think Microsoft's Xbox 360 was just streets ahead in terms of what it was doing. I think it was just, yeah, the Britpop. Yeah. Um, consoles. Unfortunately, it's just, I don't think that developers were able to, to, to match that and, and survive the rest of the time. And Sony were, whilst it had a better piece of kit I think that over time when people start to understand how to use it they were able to just make better games and, and make it better and it, it, it grew over the course of it and yeah nail on the head mate you go back you play the Playstation exclusives you don't play the Xbox do you? No. except for Halo 3 and Forza or Mind Jack <laughs> wasn't that on PS3? Maybe. It was. <laughs> it was on PS3 as well. Like I mean, like, whatever. as a talk, talking as me now, I'm much for the 360 because I can use that for streaming, whereas the PS3 bans me from using it. HDCP, you fucking arsehole, you can't turn it off. Remember yeah. Lost Planet as well, wasn't it? Lost Planet. Lost Planet was good. That was an early game, and that was like, whoa, look at the size of these giant ass monsters. It was like fucking. Starship Troopers, but on an icy planet, it was like, what the fuck is this? Was that the one with the, yeah, the boss on a train? I think that was one of the sequels. One that uncharted. Pretty sure there's a boss on a train somewhere along Yeah, there's it's, it's boss on a train. But I was pretty sure there was there's this weird monster on a train that you had to fight me. You know, I could probably handle this myself. Let's say we grab a beer in a few hours, catch up properly. Thank you very much for listening to the Drinking Games podcast. If you uh, want to get involved in this conversation and have an opinion as to whether the Xbox or the PlayStation 3 was any better or any specific games that you really cared about on any of these platforms, please get involved. Come find us on Twitter at Drinking Games UK. Alternatively, if you're not listening to any of other episodes, you can find them on Anchor, Spotify, and plenty of us. There's also a YouTube channel where we are, Drinking Games Podcast. Drink safe all. Take care.